Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you enjoy watching adorable guinea pigs, learning how to care for them, seeing product hauls or reviews, and anything else guinea pig related, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell to never miss a video. Hi guys, Skinny Pigs one here. So today's video I want to share with you my tips, tricks, and ideas for how to make sure you can buy the best cage liners, best beds for your money. So when you are starting out with getting fleece or you're just new to it, it can be really overwhelming with all the shops out there. So I've been purchasing fleece for over 10 years and here are things that I look for in order to get the best for my money. So first, can we just talk about my little earrings here? So they are guinea pigs. Scott from Scotty's Animals had sent them to me. I know, right? So they are so cute. So you should check out his Etsy shop because he's gonna have a whole bunch of these with all different colors and they're really freaking cute. So for our video, I am not going to be naming any shops that I think you shouldn't buy at. That's not what I'm about. I'm not going to spill the pellet dish on people. <laughs> it's really stupid. So first, where do you even look for guinea pig cozy shops? So down in my description box, I have links for the shops that I personally purchase from and I guess can kind of vouch for that I enjoy their quality so I keep purchasing again and again. There are different shops down there that aren't just cozies and liners. There's t-shirts, there's other guinea pig items, supplies, that kind of thing as well. So there's mainly on Etsy is where you're going to find the majority of your shops. You can find people working out of Instagram or Facebook as well. So first, when you find a shop, look at the reviews. So we have to keep in mind though that some people are going to have a negative review on their shop and it doesn't really mean that they're a negative shop to buy from. So it happens everywhere. Your favorite store, your favorite movie could have a bad review, bad rating, but you still love it. So what you want to do is scroll through a bunch of the reviews and see is there consistently people mentioning that stitches are loose, that something's poor quality, or that the sizing was wrong. And then maybe you would want to steer clear from that shop. If there's just a couple negative reviews but everything else says quality is amazing, shipping's great, service is great, that's one step in the right direction. Next, look at the listings carefully. So this is where I've made mistakes in the past. Not all cage liners are made equal. So some people are selling cage liners with one layer of U-Haul, some are selling with two. I personally love the two layers of U-Haul. There are also shops that layer it with Zorb, so that's kind of what's in cloth diapers, which is also fine. But you might find one cage liner is one layer of U-Haul for the same price of a cage liner with two layers. So obviously it would make more sense to get more absorbency for the same price as two, cage, as two layers of U-Haul. So that's something to kind of look in the description box. Does it say one layer or say two? So I personally use two. The next is they should be listing what size their cage liner is finished. So after they're done sewing, there should be a size of this is what size your liner will be when you get it. Now this is where I've made huge mistakes in the past. I have bought cage liners that their finished size is exactly the size of the cage. So what you need to know about fleece is it shrinks. So every liner that you're going to purchase, you want to see it being two to four inches wider and longer because once you wash it and dry it, it's going to shrink the first couple times after that'll stay what it is. So if you're buying a liner that's the exact same size as your cage, it's going to be way too small by the time you wash and dry it and nothing bothers me more than paying big money for a cage liner and then you have gaps in your cage. So that's something I've learned the hard way and some shops, I don't know why, the size that they say it's finished at is even smaller than the size you would want it to be. So let's say for like a 2x3, a 28 by 42 cage, I've seen ones that say they're going to be 26 wide by 40 inches long. So already you're 2 inches short, so you guys got to watch out for that. So personally for a 2x3 cage, I ask shops if you can do it 32 by 46 finished because then it works out to be the perfect size after washing and drying. 
So if you're ever not sure or you don't like the finished size, message the shop to ask them if they can do that, which it shouldn't be a problem or they should be doing something close to that anyhow. So next thing about cage liners is read the materials they're using. So there are places out there that aren't even using U-Haul or something absorbent in the middle. It's batting. So batting is not something you want to buy in your cage liner. And you don't want a cage liner that's made out of flannel or cotton, which is not safe, does not work the same as fleece. So make sure it's fleece two layers of U-Haul or it has Zorb in there, something very similar to that is the size that you want it to be. So those are the main things to look out for cage liners. So the next thing when you are purchasing cozy beds, there are so many out there to purchase. So it can be kind of difficult. So I always look at the pictures, the finished pictures of them to see do they look like nice quality? Did they have good reviews for their beds? And for bread, for bread? We're not buying bread for beds that you're buying online that need structure. So we're talking about the cubes, the huts, things that need to stay up and not collapse. Make sure that people are using foam and half inch foam. So if they're using the quarter inch foam, it's not going to hand, handle like daily washing or pigs jumping on it. It's just going to collapse. And if they're using batting in a cube, it is not going to keep its structure, its shape at all after washing and drying either. So you might see cubes for the same price. One has batting, one has the half inch foam. You want to go for the foam. So if they're charging more for foam beds, it's for a reason. Foam's more expensive, but it lasts a lot longer. So that's something that I have gotten the past two too thin of foam or it wasn't even foam in the bed and it just ended up being useless after two or three washes because it wouldn't even stand up properly. So there's things like that to look out for as well. So things like cuddle cups or couches, they don't necessarily need to have foam in them, although I do prefer it. So even for the cuddle cups with batting, totally fine because you don't need a cuddle cup to stay standing up. But after many washes, sometimes the outside does kind of collapse down a little bit. So I find foam for everything is just awesome. So that's something to keep in mind. And also look at the materials for the cozies. Personally, I would steer clear of cotton and flannel even on the outside. Some places will do cotton on the outside, fleece on the inside. Any beds that I had that had cotton or flannel on the outside just tore and ripped and you'd get strings hanging down which are very dangerous for your guinea pigs. So there are stories of it getting wrapped around a leg and cutting off the circulation. So I would steer clear of cotton and flannel personally for anything. So another thing for beds to look out for is their finish size as well. So I've had this before where I've purchased a cuddle cup or like just a little cozy cuff tunnel, a snuggle sack, something very simple. And it comes to me and it looks like the size for maybe a hedgehog or a hamster. And it's like, oh, okay, this wasn't a good idea. So you wanna make sure you're reading that as well. Generally speaking for any snuggle sacks, I think at least 10 to 12 inches that way and that way is minimum of what you need. Anything smaller and again once you wash it and dry it, it's going to shrink even more. So sizes for that are something to watch out for as well. So the next thing is probably the best step to do. Message the shop with any questions that you have. You could ask them what their timeline is for finishing your order. You can ask them what sizes are your liners when you're finished with them. Can you do me this instead? I would like them a bit bigger. Get all your questions out to them and see what their response time is. How thoroughly do they answer your questions? Do they seem really good with their communication? Because there are shops where I have messaged them asking questions and you get like one line back or they didn't answer all your questions. So I personally don't shop there because if they aren't really paying attention to you when you want to give them money, then what happens later on when you're waiting for your order? So a shop that's really good with communication, really good with explaining themselves and has you confident with the purchase you're gonna make is your best bet. So as I said, down in the description box, you can buy, find a bunch of shops that I personally use you guys are obviously welcome to use any shop you want out there. 
I do not have money to buy something from everybody to be able to test them all out. So once I find a shop I enjoy, I just stick with it because it makes sense, right? So everybody has their own preference for shops. But if you use my tips and tricks, hopefully you'll be able to weed out the shops that you're not going to be as happy with. So hopefully this was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. It was nice to see you guys. Bye! If you like watching guinea pig videos, learning how to care for us, seeing product hauls or reviews, or really anything else guinea pig, please subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Down below I've left two more videos for you to pick from, so keep on watching!